easy question. I travel for the first 100 kilometers at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour. For the next one hour, at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour, and the rest of the journey at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. If my average speed for the entire journey is 52 kilometers per hour, find the total duration and distance of the journey. So there are different stretches. In fact, there are three different stretches in this journey. First, second, and third. And all three are covered at different speeds. Hence, there's a question of average speed. So the first stretch is covered at 50 kilometers per hour. The next at 40 kilometers per hour, as well as the last at 60 kilometers per hour. And it's also given the entire journey. Entire journey is going to be that of the three summation of the three stretches. The entire journey. And the speed for the entire journey is 52 kilometers per hour given in the last line out of that. Right? What do we know about the individual part? Speed, let's say distance, time. In the first stretch, the distance is given 100 kilometers. So knowing speed and distance, obviously we can find the time. So the time taken, we could conclude it as two hours. Time is distance by speed. In the second, it's given, I travel for one hour. One hour is given. So again, speed is known, time is known. So obviously, the next step, logical step is going to be, we can find the distance. The distance is going to be for one hour, that is 40 kilometers. Now, for the rest of the journey, we do not, neither do we know the distance, nor do we know the time. But I know the average speed, right? And the average speed is nothing but summation uh, of the total distance. Uh, divided by the total time. So, if I start with the next kilometers, since I have assumed my distance, my time could be found out as time is equal to distance by speed. And so, the total distance, total distance is going to be 100 plus 40 plus x, that is 140 plus x. So, total time uh, is 2 hours and 1, 3 hours, 3 plus x by 60 and I know the speed is 52. So, it's just a matter of algebra now. Total distance over total time is equal to 52 kilometers per hour. So, we would have to do some cross multiplication and solve it. So, let me, let me try it out. 3 into this 156. 156 as a 40 out of here, so I will be left with a 60. 52 by 60, here there is an x, 1x, 1 minus 52 by 60 is going to be 8 by 60x. Right? So, twice x is equal to 120. And what is the x? 120 kilometers. So, the total. Uh, Distance is going to be 260 kilometers for the entire journey and 120 by 60 is 2 and the total time is going to be 5 hours. So we have, we started this by assuming x. Remember, uh, the question is solved but always try to see, can I reduce my calculations a bit out of here, right? So, uh, I have faintly hinted earlier also that it quite often pays off to assume time as a variable. So let's see, does that help? So let me assume the time. And since I am taking time, I typically use t. And if I take t, then the distance can be deduced as speed into time, 60t. So the total distance is 100, 140, 140 plus 60t, whereas the total time is 3 plus t hours. Right? So this time I will have total distance by total time 3 plus t is equal to 52. So there's a 52 t, 60 t, that means an 8 t is left. 156 uh, is it? 156 and 40 is 16, so t is 2 hours. Then marginally, marginally is lesser work in solving this out of time. Right? So this total time will become 5 hours, 120 and this 260. You would obviously arrive at the same answer, but better to use time as your variable. Right? Uh, a few more questions. 
Example 2. A man travels two equal distances at a speed of 60 km per hour and x km per hour. Find x if his average speed is 72 km per hour. Simple one, what should immediately strike you is that there are two equal distances and two stretches. Let me write that as well. Right? So, this becomes a specific case and if this is a specific case, we can use the uh, shorter formula or the derived formula. In this specific case, average speed is given as 2 times S1 into S2 over S1 plus S2. Right? I can use this wherever these two situations, that is there are two stretches, equal distances. Right? So, it just boils down to plugging in the value here. After the average speed is given to me as 72, 2, one speed is 60, the other speed is unknown. So, I do uh, 60 plus S2, 6 tens are 6, 12s are 12 cancels with this 6. Uh, so, we can reduce it a little bit, but let's just cross multiply. 360, 360, 10, subtract, 350. Okay, there's a multiplication, I'm sorry, right? Uh, so, this is uh, 360 plus 6s2, there's a 10s2 out over here, so that's going to be a 4s2 is 360. So, S2 is 90. So, this is your answer out of it, right? A pretty simple one, nothing great out of it. Hmm. Uh, however, watch out, this formula sometimes can become a liability. Okay, as the next example will tell us. Example reads, I have to travel from Pune to Mumbai and return back along the same path. If I go from Pune to Mumbai at a speed of 30 km per hour, at what speed should I return so that the average speed for the entire journey is 60 km per hour? Very similar to the example that we just did. So again, uh, the two stretches are equal in distance because I am travelling along the same path and one speed is given 30, the other speed return speed is asked so that the average is 60. So, let us reuse that formula out over that. Uh, 2 times 1 speed is 30, the other speed is S2, I do not know, S1 plus S2 and the average speed needs to be 60. Right? So, the 2 into 30, 60 and 60 cancel out, so cross multiply S2 is equal to 30 plus S2. The S2, S2 cancels out and I am left with some weird result that is 0 is equal to 30. There is nothing wrong in the formula. Have I applied the formula in the correct situation? Yes, the two stretches are equal in distances, Pune to Bombay, Bombay to Pune, back along the same track, right? So, there is nothing wrong at that also. I may spend a lot of time thinking what is happening out over here, but I would still not get an answer out over here, right? Hence, I say, remember this is a derived formula. Uh, it is not from the first principles. So, it would always make sense for you to know the basic of average speed. That is total distance by total uh, time taken. So, if I put that down out over here. So, the first stretch, the second stretch, first plus second is the entire journey. Right? And uh, the speeds are 30 kilometers per hour. I do not know. And the entire journey, the speed should be 60 kilometers per hour. Right? What is important is the distances are same. The distances are same. Whatever I am going to go ahead. Right? Uh, so, uh, if I want to just use that from the same uh, way that I did earlier, let us take the distance to be d and this to be d, then the total distance turns out to be uh, 2d. The total distance will be 2d from speed and time, I can find time. So, the time taken here is going to be distance by speed, 
the time taken here is going to be distance by speed which is same as d by 30 so this is the total time total time and this is the time taken one way time taken one way so which in fact is same d by 30 d by 30 so what that means is i should return back in zero time is this possible not really right so such a situation the data is inconsistent the data is inconsistent what that means is if you figure if you spend a little time thinking what is happening here is the distance has doubled for the entire journey as compared to one way the speed also has doubled right so if distance doubles speed doubles the time remains same so that means i have to come back virtually in no time right which is not possible right uh, so uh, what this means is if i travel if if i travel at 30 kilometers per hour one way there is no way it is not possible to keep a speed uh, of average speed of 60 kilometers per hour double of it cannot be possible even if i come at a speed of light i would still take some fraction of a time right and that fraction of a time will result in the average speed being less than 60. There's no way that I can maintain a speed of 60. So if it's a round trip and I want to maintain a speed of 60, I cannot go at such a relaxed pace that the entire time I take while going. I can't have negative time, right? So I will have to at least go at a speed more than 30. Hope you have got it, right? This is a tough question conceptually, uh, but I just wanted you to be very careful about this formula, uh, use it, only when you are dead sure what is happening out of it, right? Or else always go with total time 